Ice Age about 16,000 years ago. The Hudson River was a lake. And the, the water level was much, much higher. You see that little gap there on, in the uh, hills uh, across the river there? That low point there? Uh, that's probably about the, level, the water level, how high the water was. A good 100, maybe even 150 feet higher than it is today, back when this was a lake. I like taking this walk along the, Hudson, uh, along the Hudson River here at Croton Point. turns out that there's some really interesting evidence that you can see on this walk that lets us know that this was a lake about 15,000 years ago. So when we come across some, I'll point it out to you. So how do we know that the Hudson River was actually a lake at one time? Well, to answer that question, let's start by doing a little experiment. I'm going to take this bucket of sand and I'm going to mix in a little bit of gravel. Get that mixed together pretty well. Now to keep all this stuff kind of sticking together, I'm going to add a little bit of water. Mix that in real good. I want this stuff to stick together pretty good so I can kind of put it into a mound. There, that looks pretty good. So next, I'm going to take this mixture of sand and gravel and make a little mound with it. And notice the texture of this mound. Notice it looks mostly sandy, mainly because I have a lot more sand in here than I have than I have gravel. So watch what happens to the surface of this mound as I start adding a little bit of water, pouring water over it. Let's see if I can do it kind of slowly for you. I'll just dribble some water down. Notice anything about the surface texture? What do you notice about the about the area where a lot of this water was running quickly? Notice too the area down here where the water started slowing down a little bit. What do you see down here? I'll move this forward a little bit. What do we notice here? Sand or gravel? Mostly sand. And yet, look at the, all the gravel there. Where did that gravel come from? Well, it was there all the time. It's just that this water running down the side of this mound carried away a lot of the lighter stuff, a lot of the sand and left the gravel behind. So look at all the stones in this creek bed. How do you think they got there? Do you think somebody just decided to throw a bunch of rocks in there? Probably not. A more likely explanation is that they were always here but they had a lot of sand and stuff covering them, filling in between them, and that sand got washed away by rushing water and the rocks were left behind. So I'm going to do a little experiment here. I'm going to take some of the soil, get down a little bit, take some of the soil and just bring it home with me. So now I'm going to pour this soil into here, into this water here. I'm going to stir it up real good. Try to get it all mixed up. And then let's see what happens as this uh, water stops spinning around. 
as water slows down and loses its energy, it drops most of the heavier materials. But even once it has stopped moving, it still can hold some materials for a long time. Uh, the stuff you see floating in here may take several days to actually settle out to the bottom. It's been over 24 hours since I first stirred the soil into the water here. And as you can see, there's still a lot of material suspended in the water that hasn't fallen to the bottom yet. It's still very cloudy. The other thing you should notice, let's see if you can see it on here, is this very thin line. You see this sand here? Right on top of there is a very thin layer of some of the much finer material that has settled out and is starting to pile up on top of the sand. Keep this keep this line here in mind as we head back to Croton Point. We are now about halfway along the western edge of the peninsula where it meets the Hudson. As you come around this little bend here, you come to this little cove area right here. My uh, very, very small mini cove here. When you get to this area, you want to look to the uh, mud cliffs to your left. So, this is the evidence I was talking about. See these mud layers here? These are varves. Each one of these layers represents a year. Starting in the spring, when the retreating glacier starts to melt again and creating lots of water, uh, you also have spring rains coming. So we have a lot of water flowing down the Croton River. The Croton River hits Lake Albany and slows down, stops more or less, and immediately drops all its heavier material, its sand, its rocks and stuff. Now, this is not the point where the Croton River has met Lake Albany. That's way up that way, a good 100, 150 feet higher than this. Okay? This is the actual bottom of the lake. This is the stuff that remained suspended in the water after the river had dropped all its sand, silt, gravel, pebbles, etc. This is the really fine, fine grain stuff, the clay, the dust, that doesn't settle to the bottom right away, stays suspended in the water for days, possibly weeks, or even months. This, this is how we know this was a lake, because if this was a river when this stuff entered, it would all just be washed downstream. It wouldn't have stuck around here to settle to the bottom of the lake over many uh, days or weeks. Okay, so if you look down here, the layers stop. This is the first layer. All right? This is the basal layer here. This is the beginning of the process. This is probably shortly after Lake Albany formed. And if each one, remember, each one of these layers stands for one year. So if we could count each one of these layers, we could actually figure out how many years the Hudson River was a lake. But as you can see, this has been a lake for a long time. So if you ever have an opportunity to hike along the shoreline of the Hudson River at Croton Point Park along the western edge of the peninsula at low tide, I hope you take advantage of it. It's a nice walk. And as you're walking every now and then, look to the look to the uh, east, the cliffs, mud cliffs. Uh, and